This is the inside of the Bessicar E695. If I firstly move to the main control panel, I can turn the 12 volt on by pressing the power button just here. After we've done this, we can turn the water pump on just here. We need the water pump on so we can get water out the taps, flush the toilet and fill the boiler if it's been drained down. We then have awning light on and off just here and as you can see it indicates up here when it's on. We then have view levels just here so condition of the leisure battery, condition of the vehicle battery, how much water is in the fresh tank and how much water is in the waste tank. Whenever you're hooked up to the main supply you'll get this light on just here and when connected you, the main supply will charge both vehicle and leisure batteries. The entrance cabin lights just here. Beside this control panel we then have the control panel for the Truma heating and hot water system. So we have two dials. This first one here picks the power source that we want to be using for the heating and hot water system. So if I move it all the way to the top at the moment you'll see that we're now on two wavy lines. Wavy lines represent mains electricity. And if we were now to use this we would be using main supply using two kilowatts. If I now drop down, we can now use main supply using one kilowatt. Very handy if we're on a low amp site to try and avoid tripping. If we have no main supply connected, we can switch over to gas. And if we have both power sources available to us, we can use dual fuel. So a mixture of gas and mains at one kilowatt, or a mixture of gas and mains at two kilowatt. These two functions are very handy, especially in the winter months if you want to get up to temperature nice and quickly. If we now move across to the next dial, this one here will pick whether you want to be just heating hot water, or you just want your heating on its own, or if you want a combination of both. So at the moment we're in the off position. If I now flick the dial up, you'll see that we're now hovering on 40, so we're now heating hot water on its own to 40 degrees. If I now move up, hot water on its own at 60 degrees, and you'll see an amber light has come on here. This will only come on on this side if you are using main supply. If you are using gas, it will disappear. And you'll also see that you will get an amber light come on here as well, and this will go out once the water is at the temperature you have asked. If I now flick back to off again, you'll see it will flash for a few seconds. This is because it's been operating and it's just going through a little cool down. If I now flick it down, you'll see we have a little picture of a flame on its own. Over this side the flame represents gas, but on this side here the flame represents the heating system. So we've now got heating on its own. And then we control the temperature on the inner dial here. And then if I flick it down again, we've then got heating and hot water at 60 degrees. If I now just go over to gas, if it fails to light on gas, a red light will begin to flash just here. This can sometimes happen if obviously the gas bottle is not turned on or it is depleted, or maybe there might be a little bit of air in the system. If I now come to the travel seats just here and just remove the lower cushion, we have storage, but we also have the location of the water pump just here. The white part that just sits there is what is known as the surge dampener. It just helps alleviate any pump shudder.
In the overhead locker just here, we have the consumer unit. So we have the main strip switches just here. So we have the individual MCBs. And then the main RCD and test button just here. They are all numbered up. And then correspond on this sticker just up here. And then beneath that, we have the 12 volt fuses just here. And again, they are numbered up and then correspond just up here. Isolator switches just here for components that use mains electricity. So we have the heating and hot water just here. So if we turn these off and we're trying to run the heating or the hot water on main supply, it just will not work. Battery charger on and off just here. We want this one on so we can charge the batteries whilst connected to the main supply. Turning these off are more for maintenance than anything else. And then we this one here will illuminate if you have reverse polarity connected to the motorhome. This can sometimes be found on some continental sites. The buttons in the middle on this side are mainly for the workshop. By pressing it you can see the condition of the leisure battery and the vehicle battery and how many amps you're using. If you're not using the motorhome for a long period of time, you can press this black button here and shut the whole system down in the back end, basically stopping any residual draw on the leisure battery. Up here we have the solar panel regulator. We do not need to do anything with this. It will just smart charge both leisure and vehicle batteries as required. Overcab bed just here, so we have the ladder just there. Just pull the bed down and then just pop the ladder on. You'll see that there is netting beneath it that can be hooked up. Microwave just here. This will work when the motorhome is connected to mains electricity. Always advisable to remove any contents for travel. And then we have quick start just here, stop, and then we have all the power settings etc up here, defrost. Beneath that we have the hob, so we've got the electric hot plate just here. This again will work when the motorhome is connected to main supply and it operates just here. We then have the three gas rings and just push in, twist and push the igniter. And then beneath that we have the grill and again just push in, twist and push the igniter. And then the oven beneath. storage, cutlery drawer and then beneath that we have the Fetford fridge on and off just here this is an automatic fridge so as long as you are on auto it will find the best power source it can for you so because we're currently hooked up to main supply, it's put us onto mains with the little picture of the two pin plug. If I was now to go outside and pull the mains lead out, it would then automatically attempt to fire itself up onto gas. And then as soon as we start the engine of the motorhome, it will then automatically go over to 12 volt and maintain to keep itself cold whilst on the move. We can take it out of auto if we want to just by pressing here. So I can manually put it onto 12 volt maintain, 
we're going to get an error code at the moment because the engine is not running and I can manually put it onto gas or manually put it onto mains but auto is the easiest option to have it on temperature control just here wardrobe in here we have the television aerial the digital amplifier for it is just here on and off just underneath here and then we can control the boost just here just make sure it's on a normal boost not on a low boost or otherwise you will not be able to tune a television in to pop the aerial up just undo the collar just here and then just push up and then get it into the position that you require this green window here represents the back of the aerial. Once in the position that you need, lock it into place. At the moment, the aerial is sitting in the horizontal position. It can be twisted into the vertical just by turning the tail just here. Do make sure that the aerial is down for travel. TV bracket just here and then we have two main sockets, a 12 volt socket and the aerial fly lead point just here. Freestanding table just in here and also the draining board. And then we have the washroom, so we have the shower, do make sure that the shower screen is round and secured for travel. Basin just here, and then we have the toilet, so to open to the cassette just slide the grey lever across push the flush just here and then close the cassette back up again if this has been left open and you try to remove the cassette from the outside it will not come out so if you do feel resistance just make sure that nobody's left it open level indicator just here so this will illuminate when the cassette needs emptying If I now come to the back and just remove some of the cushions, we have storage beneath, and then in the corner here we have the Truma boiler. To drain the boiler down for winterization, it's just done on the yellow lever just here. Firstly, make sure that the water pump is turned off and then just flap the lever up like so and it will then begin to drain all the water out of the boiler. Just leave it up. I always suggest that if you are also fully winterizing it that you also go around and open up all the taps in the motorhome as well because this will release any airlocks in the system and help it drain down more efficiently. When it comes to refilling the boiler close all the taps in the motorhome, fill up the fresh water tank make sure this valve is flapped over as it is at the moment turn the water pump on and then the pump will begin to refill the boiler after a few minutes begin opening the taps once they're running freely on both hot and cold reclose and then the system will fully reprime itself underneath the other bench seat we have more storage we have the battery charger just here so this is what's charging both vehicle and leisure 
when the motorhome is connected to the main supply. We have the leisure battery just here. There is room in here for an additional battery if you wish. To make the rear bed, it's nice and easy. Just lift up and then pull towards you and then fold the leg out and then drop it down and then do the same with the other side and then just pop the two backrest cushions in and it makes a nice simple very large double bed just underneath the front carpet just here you will find a hatch beneath it is the fresh water tank so you can gain access to it here by unscrewing the cap very handy if you want to add cleaning powders etc to it both seats swivel round on the levers just here they're also height adjustable just on these two levers